Today I'm going to talk about the shiny stuff, things that look good on the outside, but either don't have the substance or distract us from the real work to be done. With advances in technology and disruption happening around us all the time, there are so many new things out there that look good and can completely change the way we do things in assessment. But as responsible professionals, we need to make sure that we have the evidence to support putting a new technology into practice. Let's look at fidget spinners, for example. One of the biggest selling points was that they would improve concentration for people with ADHD or autism, but there was very little research to actually support this. Most academic studies on fidget spinners have to do with the potential choking hazard in children. Anyway, reviews suggest that while fidgeting can improve concentration, usually the person doesn't focus on the fidget object. With fidget spinners, movement creates more of a distraction and less focus with the opposite intended effect. So what does this have to do with disruption? We cannot just accept someone's word that something does what it's supposed to do without any evidence. Disruptive technologies can look very advanced, but may not be based on sound theory or have any validity evidence whatsoever. We expect that disruption will be in technology or digitization, but there are advances in neuropsychology and medicine that may also play a role. What about genetic screening or MRIs? I'm going to focus mainly on technology and the impact it can have on the way we do things in assessment. Technology can impact the type of assessments we use. We're already shifting from the Likert type scale to game-based assessment, virtual reality simulations, and even MRIs and brain scans, or biometric data collection. Administration has also changed. It's shifted from paper and pencil to online already. Um, but we can include facial scans, biometrics, sociometric badges, natural language processing devices like Alexa, and virtual reality simulations to the mix. Location is also impacted by digitalization, so it's changed from classroom style administration. Now anyone can be anywhere, even in space, when we want to assess them. But technology is not everywhere in South Africa yet, so we need to look at limited resources. Feedback has also changed uh, from face to face to telephonic feedback. Now you can do feedback via WhatsApp, Skype, video conferencing. Telepsychology brings its own challenges. So we do have to think our approach to assessment. We need to adapt our current guidelines in the way we evaluate tests. With involvement of non-psychologists in test de development, we may need to change our legislation. We need to look at ethics and best practice. As a profession and professionals, we also have to be flexible, agile, open to new ideas. Ignoring advances in technology won't make them go away. So, what do we need to accept? We don't simply have to accept every new innovation as the next best thing. We can't remain close to developments in the field, but we do have the responsibility to ensure that the research behind the innovations is solid. There are a number of academic journals dedicated to disruptions happening at the moment. We have to make sure that any new process or technology that we bring into our practices has sufficient evidence to demonstrate that it is as good as or superior to existing practices. So, when choosing any new assessment, you'll have to make a number of considerations. These don't really change based on the nature of the test. Reliability, validity, fairness are still really important. Here are some do and don'ts to consider. Do make sure that you look at the research behind the assessment and make sure that there's a solid theory underlying the tool. Also check that the mechanism of administration matches the goal of the assessment. Don't overcomplicate things unnecessarily. Make sure that you keep the end user in mind. The new format may be terrifying for people who have limited exposure to technology. Also ensure that the assessment is relevant to the context. Don't use technology or games just for the sake of it. Not all things can be gamified or should be. Apply your mind to these decisions and ensure that the psychometrics are in place. If you're not sure, ask an expert and don't necessarily rely only on the supplier. A recent study showed that the majority of South African psychologists 
accepted a number of psychological myths as fact. This is frightening when we are supposed to anchor our decisions and practices in science and empirical evidence. Be selective about what you accept as the truth. These are exciting times and they bring wonderful challenges and opportunities. Let's be adventurous and try new things, but always keep the well-being of the individual you're assessing in mind. Thank you.